Section 6.1, numbers 18 and 21. These look a little bit different. Number 18, we want a factor, but one of the factors is an entire binomial. But that's not going to change how we do anything, because these are still factors. They're pieces being multiplied together. So if one of the pieces that's being multiplied to both of them is common, we can pull it out as a common factor. So if we look at the first term here, we have x times c minus 5. Then we have plus z times c minus 5. Well, the c minus 5 is a common factor to both terms in the expression. That means we can pull it out. So c minus 5 comes to the outside. All right, and that's our greatest common factor. And then remember what we do with the leftovers. When we pull out a greatest common factor, leftovers go in parentheses. So we're using the exact same process as in the previous video clip for problem 9 and 10. All right, so the leftovers on the first term, we pulled out c minus 5, we're left with an x. Then we're left with the second term, positive, bring down the sign in between, and we're left with z. And that would be it. All right, if we were to multiply it out back again, this entire c minus 5 times x gives us this, x times c minus 5, plus c minus 5 times z gives us that. We would get the same thing back again. That looks a little bit awkward, but it's a very useful kind of factoring. It's going to help you later on sol solving harder equations where you have to put parentheses back into the expression. So we're going to try another one that goes a little bit beyond this one, and it's called factoring by grouping. So we'll look at, let's see, let's try number 21, still section 6.1. So we want to factor by grouping. And we have 4st plus 10t minus 10s minus 25. All right, so this is going to put all of the GCF information together in one problem now. All right, we're going to take out greatest common factors of numbers. We're going to do it for variables. We're also going to do it with a binomial. So the first thing we want to do, factoring by grouping, the way you know that you might want to factor by grouping is because you have four terms. One, two, three, four. All right, that points you to thinking that you might need to factor by grouping. When you've got four terms, Start off by grouping the first two together. Group the second two together. And then factor those separately. Let's start with the first one. If I have 4st plus 10t, I can think of the common factors here. So think of the 4 as 2 times 2. Think of the 10 as 2 times 5. So I can pull out a 2. And I cannot pull out an S, but I can pull out a T, because they both have a T. 2T comes out, leftovers in parentheses. All right, so for the numbers, I took a 2, so I have a 2 left. I took a T, so I have an S. Put the plus sign down. I took out the 2, I have a 5. I took out the T, so there's nothing else left. <coughs> All right, now that one's done. I took out the GCF for the first grouping of two terms. Now I'm going to look at the next grouping of two terms. Minus 10s minus 25. So I can think of this as 5 times 2, 5 times 5. That's going to give me my GCF to pull out. So for the 5, I'm going to go, or for the first term, I'm going to go ahead and pull out the 5. And you notice I can't pull out any letters or variables at all. This one has an S, this one doesn't. So there's nothing else to pull out. I can pull out a 5 from both of them. And then 2 is left over on the first one with an S. 
And then on the next one, and I'm not going to put the sign here on purpose. Um, next one, five is gone, so five is left over. Now the question is, what's the sign? Now, if I don't pull out the minus sign at all that's in common here, I'm going to end up with a minus sign here and here, right? But I don't want to have that because then this, the 2s plus 5, will be different from the minus 2s minus 5. I won't be able to pull it out as a common factor. So when you factor by grouping, you always want these two binomial terms to look the same. They're only going to look the same if I pull out this minus sign, take it out. It undistributes, which means both of these lose their minus sign and they turn positive. So the net result is that I have 2t times 2t, oops, times 2s plus 5, take away 5 times 2s plus 5. Now I have a common binomial to pull out. That s looks like a 5 now. Alright, so common binomial, pull it out, 2s plus 5. Leftovers, 2t, take away 5. And then we're done. That's factoring by grouping. It's a little bit longer to check out. You'd have to FOIL this out, double check to make sure you get the start back again.